Yeah, this sound like a movie right here. Yup. Well, fuck it. Here go the soundtrack. Soundtrack, nigga. Bullets of gun smoke. Dipset. Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. They wanna war, huh? Hello, and welcome to the War Report on the A Show Network. I am your host, Cyrus, and I am joined by my co-host, Quan, from the Comeback Spot. How are you doing, man? Man, I'm great, man. Got the fresh cut. I'm having a good day, man. How you doing? <laughs> that, that was the first thing I noticed when you called <laughs> in the Zoom call. I, I saw uh, the light gleaming on the sides and shit. You see it, bro. You see it. <laughs> but yeah, uh, how, uh, how's your week been since, since last week? Um, it's good, man. I've been catching up on wrestling. You know what I've you know what I've been on? I've been watching a lot of um so I think I told I said this last week about how like I didn't watch WCW growing up. Mm-hmm. So now I'm I've been watching it since the first nitro. And I just literally last night I just finished um Bash at the Beach where Hogan joined NWO. So oh, wow. <laughs> Shaking it started now. That that first the first couple of months at Nitro was it was not good, but we're getting somewhere now. So the, the uh, cruiser weights are coming in. Uh I'm I'm waiting for the part where you're just like watching WCW and you're just like, oh shit, this reminds me of an AEW episode. <laughs> low, low key, low key. I see it. I already see it. Well, what, yeah, you, you see it on this episode because I definitely did. I didn't watch a lot of it, but uh, I didn't watch a lot of WCW. But the way this show ended, I was just like, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Cyrus, you ready for in the trenches? I I don't know, man. It's <laughs> It's been such a weird week in wrestling. I would say the only bit of good news came out today. <laughs> and then we'll get into that. Yeah, we can get into that. We can get into that. But first things first, former AEW champion had a little interview on, I believe, BR Live. Mm-hmm. And he was asked about a potential return to the WWE. And I quote, Mr. Mockley said, you got to say never say never because you don't want to run back what you said years later because you don't know what'll happen. I mean, yeah. seems like a safe, it seems like a safe answer to me. I mean, like they, they <laughs> ended things amicably, um, Moxley and WWE. I don't remember there being any beef or anything like that. So mm-hmm. like it's only smart to keep, you know, business between the two parties open. Like I know that, you know, once John Moxley like left WWE and he like, you know, he did his, podcast grand tour but all it was never that he had like truly any issue with it like it just seemed like he was like truly just burnt out yeah and you know he he is another one of those guys that just says like you know vince kind of like really micromanaged his uh you know his business his product and you know he seemed he he seemed very understanding of that part, but everybody else was just like, "Oh, you know, like you're set free now." And he was just like, yeah. no, I, under, "I completely understand how it was." And now he's just like, "Shit, you never know. Things might change. Everything might be straight." So he's just like trying to not burn any bridges, unlike sure. uh, a lot of the other people in AEW. And hey, you know, you know the drill, man. Every everybody comes back. Yeah. He'll come back. Everybody who hasn't come back yet, everybody's come back. Hey, he he had like. We, we say it all the time. What what is a mid card Moxley in AEW, dog? That shit is not. It don't exist. So, yeah. one, 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 I think once is like time in AEW's finished, like it's going to be good. I I think once Moxley sees that AEW is in a good place without him, I think he would like just step aside and like let it rock. Yeah, let like it rock. Uh, once he gets his footing. Yeah, I can see one more little last little run before um, he hangs it up. Lord knows when that could be. I mean, that could that could be ten years from now. Who knows? You know what I mean? It could be anything. Cause like, uh, what is it? Revolution. Most likely, that's when we're gonna get the Kenny Omega and John Moxley match. Renee Young. <laughs> I forgot about it until I was on Instagram. I forgot she was pregnant, and she's very mm. much showing. Oh, and- she. I haven't seen a picture of her. Uh, if you go on her Instagram, I think it's like one of her latest posts. Like she, I forgot that she is pregnant. So you know his time is like imminent there. Yeah. So he even I, said that in an interview. He was like, "I got a kid coming." So you know, who knows? Yeah. I can't. Makes sense to me. So like, whenever that's gonna happen, is gonna happen, and you oh, know, wow, he's just not trying to. Showing. Yes, just not <laughs> trying to burn any bridges. So yeah, I think sure. that's good on his part. Uh, and the next topic we have. Um, 
when WWE signed a very big deal earlier this week, uh, basically being a part of the Peacock uh, streaming service. I don't know why people are upset. But Do you want to talk about that? We can talk about that a little yeah, bit. Yeah, I'm just going to talk that, about that. It that involves us. I, I, not just Hon the main show. Honestly, you know, it's not news. But I just want to, like, you know, just say some stuff on it. <laughs> like, I, I think we all know about, like, the big deal that happened. But a lot of people are talking about NXT, quote-unquote, losing to NHL when it comes to the USA uh, Network. And to those people that say that, do y'all know that it's going to be on Wednesday? Do you know if NXT is truly going to be getting the boot? Because... I, I just see a whole bunch of people saying that, oh, once NHL come back, it's over for NXT. And I'm just like, is it? Because you remember that period of time? Uh, well, the period of time where we got Super Tuesday, AEW on Thursday, and then both of them did amazingly well yeah. on both like separate weeks. So like, why not? Like, hey, I'm gonna keep it stack with you. I don't want to watch both these shows in the same night. That shit be, <laughs> be wearing me out, bro. <laughs> yeah. So like, uh, I don't think it's I don't think like it's technically losing or a big deal. Like, you know, we don't do a lot of ratings talk on here, but like, when these shows are separate from one another, they do extremely well. And AEW numbers. uh reportedly was down a lot <laughs> this week. NXT up, whatever, but like, you know, it's not all that bad if it loses the NHL. And um, I saw some things about AEW being on HBO Max. What content? What they gonna put on there? Exactly. <laughs> they even got a hundred hours of dynamite yet? Do they? I like, don't think they do. Literally, the WWE has like forty years worth of content. Plus and the, other companies. How about that? And that's just WWE. <laughs> I was just gonna yeah, say Yeah. Like plus other things. So like Peacock is probably like, oh, you know, the current product's ass. Peacock don't care about that shit. Just just like you and every like everybody else you know and all your other friends. They remember the attitude era and that being on their streaming platform. Cyrus, I'll put money up right now. The first WWE to Peacock commercial you see, I bet you the first wrestler you'll see is Stone Cold Steve Austin. I am oh. 100% sure the first wrestler you're going to see on that screen <laughs> is Stone Cold Steve Austin. I'm telling you that right now. It's going to literally, it's going to be, it's going to be everybody that we see uh, currently. It's going to be Stone Cold, The Rock, Ric Flair, John Cena, like yep. that's your big three. And then, and then they'll show you Drew. Then they'll show you Drew and Sasha. But they'll, they'll, yeah, they, yeah, they'll, they'll first... show you some modern boys. Yeah. But those are for sure going to be your legends that are in it. And you know, seeing those people, they spark positive memories. So therefore, yep. Peacock. Uh, and so, I've never seen Peacock's interface or whatever. But people going, I rather pay ten dollars for just the network rather than. I will paying five dollars for getting Peacock and WWE like a fuck ton of content. Like wrestling fans, y'all y'all boys are insane. Yeah. <laughs> they really said they want less bang for their buck. Uh, and I don't know. Like, I'm pretty sure a lot of people do have HBO Max, AEW, AEW sticking out like a sore thumb on that motherfucker. So. Let let's just throw that out of uh, out of the the cards. <laughs> I don't see that happening anytime soon, though. No. Yeah, like maybe when uh, AEW hits like ten years in the game, yeah. like everybody wants to acknowledge AEW as like this big baby. Whenever you uh, whenever you have your criticisms, but like want people to act like they've been in the game for a really long time, and then you should just respect it. Like, nah, man. Yeah. Been, you, you, earn your stripes, man. <laughs> but that uh, that's it for me on that. I think you hit the nail on the head with that one. But um, to more important news to us, especially you, this is your bag. Uh, Mako Satamora signs with NXT as a uh, wrestler and a coach. He will be reporting to NXT UK. Uh, I don't know. Is it 
soon. Uh, I don't know. Yes. I didn't watch. I didn't yeah. watch UK this week yet. I haven't watched it. Uh, yet, so. I, I didn't watch it. Uh, I haven't watched it yet either. I don't think there's anything on the show that was like must see. Okay. But Mako Satomura will be coming to NXT UK as a wrestler and a coach, and she will be wrestling Kaylee Ray eventually. I'm not sure if it's for the title or not. Or is it just going to be an exhibition match? Everybody's saying, like, Mako should just take the title from her. And I'm just like, oh, shit. I don't know. But I definitely think that Mako would be a good nerf for her. Because you got to get you got to get that title off her. And then you got to kind of get it off Walter. And I see Rampage Brown being sort of that uh, that guy yeah. to like come up and take it. But Mako Satomura, amazing wrestler. I think everybody knows that. I'm excited for her to be on NXT UK, but get that shit out of here. We need her on NXT. We need, we are in the states, baby. We need her in Florida. We we need that shit on Wednesday nights. Book book that book that flight to Mexico to Tulum, Mexico. You feel me? Tulum, a little vacation, <laughs> and then I mean? straight to Orlando. Uh, we need her, EO. We need her, Tony Storm. Uh, her, literally like everybody, and. I definitely think that the NXT UK thing is a small pawn, but Mako Satomura has done uh, has done a lot in the UK before, so she's probably comfortable working with a lot of women out there. Yeah, yeah, I saw I saw a clip. I know you sent me the YouTube link. She already had matches with Kaylee Ray. Yes. So I mean, at least there's some uh, I, experience between the two. I hope the match that they have on NXT UK is much better than the match they had on Pro Wrestling Eve. I'm sorry, that match oh, is not great. Oh, <laughs> See. See that that's that's where I kind of lack at where you you're definitely plus I don't I'm not I, 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 trust privy me. to women's wrestling. On ch- the indies. Ch- uh, check it out and then when it happens, just just compare the two. Like I definitely yeah. think uh, it, it's it's sort of a styles clash, but it did have a big fight feel to it. And Pro Wrestling Eve definitely did a a great job just hyping up the match a lot. Uh, and they I think they released the match VOD for free during quarantine, so that was really nice of them to do. Maybe I'll check it out. But uh, a very small note on, I, I just wanted to add this. Uh, I know it's not really super duper news heavy, but I just wanted to ask the people. Y'all watching the Go Big Show? Hey, look, I saw my Twitter time. I got hit with an ad. They said 12 million people watching that show or something like that. Some crazy number. I said, uh. It, 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 uh is it cap? <laughs> I have I have not seen I can't I can't speak for you. I have not um, seen the show at all. I have not seen yeah, the clip. I I, I, I I don't have cable, so yeah, yeah, I you won't cast me really like trying to really tune in to the uh, go, the big, go show. big show. But if you if you peeped it, if you watched it, let me know. Let let's have a little chat about it because when I got that really long ad where it was like the bunny that's like peeking over the uh, the thing for the big go home. I didn't even uh, see that for the one. go home show. I think me and Ben got the same ad, and it was just like oh. taking a mad space on the timeline, just like mad real estate. I said, "Y'all gotta catch this block." I'm sorry. I saw, I saw, <laughs> I saw a grown man swallow a sword on there. I seen that. That was that was something. <laughs> but um, that's the only thing I've seen it, about that show. It's that de- uh, it's definitely just some like Ridley, believe it or not. But I want to know, like, are y'all watching, y'all y'all watching it, man. <laughs> but with that said, <laughs> we're gonna go into AEW. Cody Rhodes. You little punk. You want a battle? You just name the time and the date. I'll be there. You little punk with your little blonde hair. Look like a little girl. You want some of the Shack Attack? Name the place. Matter of fact, let's do it in March. How about that? Starting off the show, um, we got Lance Archer and Eddie Kingston in a no disqualification match. Uh... I caught the whole match on YouTube, which is really good. Like they uh, they uploaded like the full match, and I thought I thought it was cool. I thought it was nice. Uh, it's definitely it was definitely nice to see like Eddie Kingston like kind of like take pain without like you know having it to be uh, without having Bob wire bats or tables chairs or whatever like involved. So uh, that was really cool to see. And I thought Lance Archer looked really good there. How do you feel about it? I would say this is the best um, Eddie Kingston match I've seen in AEW. That's not been a gimmick kind of hardcore match. Mm-hmm. Um, as you know, I like to I like to record and rate all my wrestling matches. I believe I gave this a three point two five out of five. Three point two five. Okay. Yeah, so it it was it wasn't on my three point five just yet. It was like, but either way, regardless of all that, I I really enjoyed it. I thought it was a good match. Um, great way to start the show. 
lots of intensity. I like the fact that um, <clears throat> Lance Archer told uh, Jake Roberts to stay back. Yes, love that part. Yeah, it definitely. Cause I mean, at this point, Archer's a face, right? You can see. Yeah, say oh, that kind of, yeah, at this point, absolutely, he's, he's absolutely on. a face. Oh, and I told you about Dark Order too, but we'll get back to that later on. I told you about them, but um, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it was a good match. That's all yeah. I really had to do. Um, I'm not a big fan of this feud, kind of like really continuing. <laughs> Yo, Honestly, does, does uh, AEW not know how to end feuds? They don't know how to end feuds, oh. uh, and I believe uh, it. Sorry, it, it's not on the screenshot of the uh, Beach Break card, but I think they're gonna have a lumberjack match uh, happening very soon on. Uh, well, next week on Beach Break, and I'm just like, isn't this like the twelfth like lumberjack match? Like, is it is this match type really necessary? <laughs> Like I definitely think that uh, this feud should have uh, this should have been it, and Eddie Kingston probably should have just been on top and still do the um, do the Lance Archer turn so he can like go, you know, possibly wrestle uh, Miro. That that would have been <laughs> that would have yes. been something good. I would. Uh, but it, it, it is what it is, and we're we're gonna get into the um, beach break prediction, but. The next match, you you wanted to tell me something about Dark Order. <laughs> look, man, you told me last week they wasn't faces. And I don't look. I don't know what a face <laughs> in wrestling is anymore, but they like some faces to me. Um, <laughs> I, I honestly, I'm not the biggest fan of um, the AEW like multi man tags a lot. A lot of them they're just kind of like, what is even going on? But mm -hmm. I really, I actually enjoyed this one. I liked it. And my favorite part um, with John Silver. Yeah. A little hot tag, yeah, a little segment, a little yeah. whatever that was. That, that that's, was that's it. <laughs> it, it, it reminded me of um, when Cesaro did that, uh, mm. rightly against the Good Brothers. That was the same against them, too, when he did the whole outside the ring run through everybody. I love John Silver. The reason I like John Silver so much is because he's clearly a tiny, tiny man, but he wrestles <laughs> like a big man. So uh, yes, I, I, like, he's what on big shot. What is he doing? What, what I like about John Silver is like I, I like the growth of his character and how comfortable he is like gotten in the ring. Like yeah. I'm not really familiar with anything he's done on the Indies or if he was even on the Indies really, but him really just coming out as like some just whatever generic dude for the Dark Order and then kind of really being like the front man for it, uh, yeah. I, I think it's very interesting. And he has like a, he has like a shit ton of personality. I, I really like uh, the stuff that he does. And I don't know. I don't know if I really like this match because the only the only part I really enjoyed was the part where John Silver came out and went crazy. Uh, I kind of just like you know it didn't really have my attention until he had the hot tag. Mm, that's fair. That's fair. Um, <clears throat> as for uh, John Silver and Reynolds, I know they, I saw them a couple times over at Damn. What the hell is that promotion? The indie promotion in Providence in like in Rhode Island. I'm completely blanked on it. Beyond, beyond wrestling, I, when I cut, I went to a couple oh, beyond wrestling shows. Okay, okay, okay. They did work out there. I swear, I saw um, Oni and them too. Oni Logan was out there too. But, um, that's not really. When I remember, I went to an indie show here. It's Ro is uh, called Ronin Wrestling. This is yeah. uh, two stories actually. I remember going to a show, and Danny Birch was uh, he was there as Martin Stone, and he was their champion. And mm. I was watching the main event match, and I was just like, I know this motherfucker. Where are you from? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the second story is, I remember uh, I was getting ads because I followed them on Facebook, and. Johnny Gargano was literally having his like last set of matches here, like in Florida. Yeah. And I could have went to see his last Indy uh, match and I never went. <laughs> that shit is insane. But uh yeah, it John uh I, I do like John Silver a lot. I'm curious to see what they're gonna do with Stu Grayson and Evil Uno because it's kind of it's is very much clear to me who are the top players going uh going forward within Dark Order. Mm -hmm. Uh and then with that said, we're going to get into beach break predictions. This, I, I don't think this card is in like very must-see to me. I think this might be one of the weakest of the, what is it, you know, mid-month uh, mid or mid-turning point TV specials. <laughs> yeah. But uh, we're going to start off with Britt Baker versus Thunder Rosa. I think that match should be really great. 
uh, I, you know, I've never been shy. I, I do love Thunder Rosa a lot. I think she's an amazing wrestler. And I think Britt Baker is also coming into her own. And I think this will be the test for her to see if she is worth. Well, I can't say if she's worthy of facing Hikaru Shida because they're going to do the women's tournament. And we, we'll talk about a little about a little bit about that in quick hits. But Britt Baker or Thunder Rosa, who are you going with? Oh, man. You know what? I completely forgot about the women's tournament because I was thinking I would have Britt Baker go over and then she could just wrestle Kukaru Shida. But that kind of what did they say when the tournament is? Can they still could they could they could they still just do next uh, Britt versus Kukaru they, Shida and then still have the tournament? They can and how they do it. Um, well, the reason why we haven't talked about much of the tournament on the show is because whenever I check the AEW Twitter, there's not much updates on it. Uh, like all their women stuff but <laughs> uh the one news uh which was going to be a quick hit is that Riho will be coming back and she'll be wrestling serena deebs uh in two weeks i believe i don't think it's going to be a beach break match they need uh, her. do they i think so. you know i think i think they need her I, i'm gonna i'm gonna reserve my comments because god knows she comes back and she has a banger with serena deebs so <laughs> it, it, it's just been a minute that we've seen Riho, and uh i mean i think she's okay but I guess they have her win here, and then I guess they can have a rematch in the tournament. I don't. I don't really know. Wait, who's her? Uh, I mean, Britt? um, Britt Baker. Yeah, I, I don't know how this goes. Maybe we just wait until the tournament's over, and then you know, Britt Baker then gets her shot. But whatever happens during the women's tournament, I guess we'll be keeping a close eye on it. But for this, uh, for the match, I'll be going with Britt Baker. Just right. I, I, she needs to be, go. she needs to be AEW champion already. Hikaru Shida, she ain't doing release. She's not doing anything with that title. I'm sorry. She ain't on TV, bro. She's not. She's not. They don't, on even, TV. Me- they don't even mention her half the time. Exactly. So it, it, it's best to just give it to somebody that you know you put on the show all the time, and then you can just have the belt on there all the time. So you know just. Have people care? <laughs> yeah, but um, this is not a match. But this is the wedding of Kip Sabian and Penelope Ford. How do you think this ends? I'm gonna start off right now. I love we- wrestling weddings. I love them all. I've never seen a, a wedding angle that I didn't <laughs> like. The Bobby Lashley Lana one, classic. Let's that, talk about it. That's just a awesome. classic. Uh, but um. Orange, Orange Cats, you're going to get involved somehow. I don't know what he's going to do. He's going to do some silly nonsense. Um, I'm sure it'll be a fun little segment. I think Miro is funny he, he, for good comedy stuff. I like Orange Cassidy. Um, I'm sure Chuck Taylor is going to do something. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't know how long Trent is going to be out, but if he is able to show up, I think he would be like the surprise, like... Uh, like a surprise show up and who knows it, it might even like lead into I don't a, think so I, I was gonna say I, it might lead into a match you know like you know how Robbie doing those two segment shits now yeah uh, I, oh my God, <laughs> don't get me started on that you know I hate that shit <laughs> I hate that shit you think they go from a wedding to a match off the yes. rip a yes. match on your wedding day yes that'd be crazy <laughs> I, I, I think it'd be cool a match on your wedding day he had to wrestle in the tux that hey you know, you know, that, you know, that, that'll sound fire do it, do it, do it, Tony. If you're listening, do it. Hey, uh, my but my concern with it is uh, there might not be any time for it on the show because we have a tag team battle royale with featuring literally almost I think every team on AEW except two. So we have Top Flight, The Acclaim, Private Party, Jurassic Express, Sammy Hager, Pride and Powerful. FTR, Young Bucks, Inner Circle, and Dark Order. Ten tag teams in this match. What what they iteration are, of Dark Order? What is it? Which one? Did they uh, Stu Grayson and uh, Evil Uno. Uno. Okay. I a I, I hate this match already <laughs> because just let everybody let's let's just read let's just think about what happened a couple weeks ago. I think last week where the Inner Circle all fought over who is going to represent the inner circle in the tag team division. 
they have the match they have the three-way <laughs> jericho and mjf is your team that represents the inner circle so why the fuck in this match everybody in inner circle in this motherfucker bodies man uh, <laughs> like, it does it does make that whole match you just state it completely pointless if they're gonna have all three of the team i'm with you i'm with you like I, I can understand pride and powerful being in it because you know they are a legitimate tag team and they yeah, what's sammy won. hagar doing in there why oh, is sammy yeah. hagar doing there why isn't it hybrid two why isn't it scu uh why is it uh team taz <laughs> word you're not even in it oh side note on um about mjf and chris jericho did you mm-hmm. hear how they like they like combine the two songs together jericho oh, and MJF. No. it sounds terrible i was like why would they do that i i, I bet it does <laughs> it does not sound good bro uh also like where is butcher and blade like Butcher and Blade were finally getting like I was really like getting really getting into them, and then they just stopped using them. Ever since that, of, that like uh, that uh, that ladder uh, match or whatever the hell it was, that hardcore match they had, I, we didn't see him. Yeah, ever since that match then, was hard. That match was hard. <laughs> Not the uh, Dustin Rhodes. Yeah, where where's uh Dustin Rhodes and QT Marshall in this shit? Yeah. Why why do we have all of the inner circle in this? Like it literally makes no sense to me, and um. The stipulation for this, if uh, the Bucks are your AEW Tag Team Champion, but if they win the match, they get to handpick their opponents. They let us know on that on the show as they just glare at the Good Brothers. Um, and then whoever wins this match gets to challenge the Bucks. It's really hard to call it because I really don't see the only... I want to say Pride and Powerful because I, you know, obviously I want them to have more claim in uh, the tag team division. And I could see them possibly like eliminating um, Jericho and MJF, creating that rift. And then yep. Sammy Hager, they can just, you know, what is it? Luchasaurus could probably like eliminate Hager and like they're the same height or whatever. So they could easily get rid of one. So I'm going to go with Pride and Powerful on this one. How about you? Um, I think. And I'm, I've been thinking about it. I think they might go with the uh, the Young Bucks route. It's been a minute since the Young Bucks like really took a L, which is fine because they're the champions and they should be booked strong. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go with the Bucks, and I think they're gonna pick the Good Brothers. I think that might be where they go with it. Yeah, to get the Good Brothers uh, on the card. I could see that. It it was very heavy handed. Yeah. During the uh, the main event, like there was no hiding it. So I really did think that. Uh, this battle royale was really odd but you know what also might be the case let's say next wednesday the good brothers are backstage and they just wanted to beat the shit out of somebody and then they take their spot into in the battle royale and win mm. so instead of being handed the title shot they actually earn it <laughs> That's there oh they get they're in the battle royale you're saying yes yeah I don't, yeah that could work I can see that. Maybe um, I don't even know who's in there. They could throw uh, just get, just, get the acclaimed out of here. Don't want to see no top flight. <laughs> nah, get top flight out of here, bro. What? No, I'm getting the acclaimed out of here. Them boys, them boys with the Donald Glover raps. I'm good. Get them out of here. <laughs> uh, oh shoot. But um, with the, with the main event. Uh, oh no. The Whatever. good brothers are in the main event. I was so stupid. See, look, see, <laughs> you try to you try to overbook shit. I mean, I, low key, they can hey, still probably they that, can still do it. <laughs> I I forgot that they're in this match because uh, <laughs> I just forget that a, uh, Kenny Omega is AEW champion. Um, but we have a six man tag with Kenny Omega and the Good Brothers. <laughs> Impact superstar Kenny Omega. Yeah. <laughs> your AEW uh, <laughs> Intercontinental Champion uh, Kenny Omega and then uh, Phoenix Pac and John Moxley is Pentagon hurt? I believe he's hurt yes okay because I was just like well that's weird that it's <laughs> it's not him but hopefully uh, wish him a speedy recovery and I'm gonna go with um, John John Moxley on this one yeah I think I think John's pinning I think John's pinning Kenny I think it's where they go. You know, I was thinking about it. I don't see this on the notes, so I'm going to bring it up now. 
Um, Revolution's like a month away. How are they supposed to drag out um, Sting in Darby versus uh, Team Taz? Uh, like, what are they going to do for a month? To to make to make up for the uh, the overbooking I did earlier, <laughs> I'm going to say that uh, they just keep talking shit, and then month? yeah, because oh. that's all Team Taz can really do. I think um, maybe we will get a singles match between Darby Allen and Ricky Starks. Run that uh, back. It, they've, been, among- they've been beefing for a while, so yeah. <laughs> Be for a very since long the, time. Since the jump. Um, February is a short month. So that is true. That's true. They they only they only really have like three weeks, I believe, to really okay. like put this whole thing together. So we can we can just get the classic shit talking, beating up backstage, and then a, a, a match between Darby Allen and Ricky Starr. That's and fair. I'm with that. Uh, and that is Beach Break. Forgive me for overbooking. I completely forgot. That. <laughs> I feel dumb as hell. Book the hell on that show, boy. <laughs> I mean, I just, you know, I don't hate the AEW product. I just, like, want to see it do well. So, you know, I, I do be excited and I do enjoy fantasy booking. <laughs> uh, but in quick hits, uh, we already covered one with Riho coming back to wrestle Serena Deebs in the women's tournament. And then we just have Hangman Page versus Ryan N- uh, Nimeth. How do you feel about the match? I'm gonna be honest with you. I didn't know his brother wrestled, so that yeah. was inter- that was interesting. The um, the last name caught my eye, and I was like, yeah. Well, I was like, oh, is that like is that Dolph Ziggler's brother? And I was like, okay, cool, cool. I mean, he kind of wrestles like Dolph. <laughs> um, from what we saw, he did the whole head gyrate. Yeah, he he, uh, uh, he 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 paid homage, and I like Tony yeah. Schiavone just like doing a little head nod, but not outright saying yeah, that. Not saying oh, it's from his brother. Um. This match could have been on AEW Dark. I'm sorry. Yeah, probably. I mean, I don't think Heyman really worked a lot on TV this year so far. Let me look. Let me look at my notes. See what you, I uh, How many matches they, he had? They did the whole uh, Dark Order thing oh, where, okay. uh, where they proposed and he said no. And then they did the thing before that. Uh, so he had two matches this year, bro. Well, the year just started. <laughs> I'm just saying. Two out of four weeks. That's what I'm saying. Uh, but on Dark, it would have been three. I don't know. Whatever. Because I don't count Dark, so. Whatever. We don't count dark. Don't but no, this this match could have been on dark. Uh it, it is it is what it is. I didn't think this match was like particularly anything really interesting to me. I thought it was like A OK. Um I I don't really see anybody talking about it that much either. So I, po- people probably think it's A OK as well, or yeah. possibly lesser, but I thought the match was like A OK. I it's will good, say it's good enough to main event dark. Yeah, I will say. Um, when I initially when that Matt Hardy came out, I thought he was coming out for Ryan. So I was like, oh, you about to get another young dude on his little squad. But <laughs> I guess they're they're going with uh, Matt Hardy trying to school, pull the free school. agent hangman. I don't. What what is this? Weird. This is this is <laughs> as you know the other uh, you know other booking that I did last week where I think the Dark Order. Well, I think. I think it would have been interesting if Hangman just tried to like turn around and try to do, like rejoin the Dark Order, and then like they're really cold to him, like they don't really acknowledge him. Whatever Matt Hardy's doing, I don't care. I don't really want him involved. I don't think they are necessarily a great pairing together. But I do appreciate AEW finally telling Matt Hardy to just take a step back and just be a be a manager, be a valet, just do all that. So sure, I think yeah. that's cool. That, that's my thoughts on it. <laughs> I don't. I don't know if they sign. Uh, I don't know if they sign uh, Ryan, but it'd be cool. Did yeah. he sign? I don't. Did they sign him? Is he all? Did they get the? Did he get the? Uh, the graphic? <laughs> I, I I I haven't seen the graphic. I probably would have seen the graphic before we seen the match. So <laughs> we, we'll we'll keep our eye on the AEW Twitter. <laughs> but uh, that's it for AEW. So we're gonna get into NXT and everything in the Dusty Classic. Vreau să vă spun o poveste despre un bărbat. Foolishness tempts the course of fate. The Hierophant's goal pass on his wisdom, elevate his followers. Such conviction 
leads to... Obliteration. Stay on your journey. Or he will alter his. Kaireza. Fall. So, how'd you feel about the main event between Kyle O'Reilly, Balor, and the Brit and Brawlers? Because I thought it was Heat Rock. <laughs> Let me go look at my uh, my oh, rating for whatever. Let's see the ratings. Uh, uh, let's see what the, what's the ratings say. Honestly, yeah, you know, I, you know what? I gave it a three and a half, which is good on my book. Three and a half is a good match to me. Um, yeah. What can you say? It's, it's four guys that hit hard, four guys that are really good at what they do. Mm-hmm. Um. Yeah, just a strong match. I don't really have any like words yeah. on it. I just it was just a really strong match. Uh, yeah, that that's why I put it up first. Not any like extreme thoughts. I I just really thought uh, seeing Balor and Kyle O'Reilly team is really good because we're still seeing that story blossom in a sense. Like uh, really cool stuff there. Brit and Brawlers. It was just nice to see them wrestle on the show rather than them just like not appearing until like the Dusty Classic. Uh, Good, you know, I will say. Winners. But I will say, this, I did, I know the stats on this. This was their first match this year. They have not wrestled all year. So, <laughs> we'll throw that out See, there. Uh, so it, it, it's um, it was it was just nice to see them in action, and then actually taking the losses, uh, cool because you know they just look strong in the end anyway. With yeah. Pete Dunn coming out and cracking the fingers of Balor, and Balor standing tall. Even though they didn't really beat him up, uh, but standing tall with undisputed era at the end and. Honestly, it's been a long time coming. <laughs> Poor Bobby Fish, man. You know what I mean? <laughs> hey, Bobby Fish. Uh, Bobby Fish didn't get the future endeavor, or you know, well, what is it? Hey, you just want to be a coach, bro? So you know what I mean, it might I think, be it might be that time for him. Now. I, 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 I think you. I think he's in a good spot right now. <laughs> so, about to take his spot. Yeah, and then over on the women's side, the women title picture. We talked about it a little bit last week with uh, EO, uh, EO Shirai, Tony Storm, and Mercedes Martinez. They all have a segment on the show, and you think it's going to be a triple threat at the same uh, the Valentine's Day paper, uh, pay-per-view? It's, it's looking like it, and you know what? Sign me up, baby. I'm in. Yeah, uh, I, was, I was talking to Justin last night about it, and I was just like, you know, it's been a pretty long time since we had a triple threat for the women's title. What's the last one? Do you remember? Uh, I believe the last one would have been uh, Rhea Ripley, Charlotte Flair, and Io. Oh yeah, right. Okay. So I was thinking that that I was thinking that whole remember that four way. It was like Peyton, Billy, Oscar, and um. No, I I was thinking the one after that. Uh, Io, was... Kyrie, Shayna, and Bianca. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, that's, I, yeah. I I said triple threat, but I don't know. That's the first one that always comes into my head yeah. is the fatal four way. But I forgot about that one. Yeah. Uh, the, I, I believe it's the in your house. Uh, it was the in your yeah, house that show. Was, that was yeah. in that was in your house. Yes. So, um, not not a year, but it, it's been a long time since we had a uh, fatal four. Six Ryan. months. Yeah. That, yeah. that was in June. Yeah. And I think that would be a. This would be a really good time to. I don't know if this is controversial, but get the title off Io Shirai. I think it's time. <laughs> she had a she had a good run. I wouldn't be bad mad at it. Um. I don't think Mercedes Martinez is going to win the belt. I do. So, I mean, by the process of elimination, if they had this three-way, I think it would be Tony Storm. And yeah, uh, I'm, I'm okay pro, with that. I'm pro, I'm pro Tony on this one, too. And then with Tony being, you know, her heel self this time around and being NXT champion, that kind of opens the door for Shotzi Blackheart. Mm, this, yep. it's, it's her time. Uh, Tony Storm could beat Ember Moon possibly for her title. I don't think they're. <laughs> it's it's looking real weird. I don't think they're going to do uh, EO versus Raquel. So uh, yo, yeah, what happened with that? It now is. You what it, now you it is. So hey, Paul, hey. just DM me, bro. If you want me to forget about the finish at War Games, just let me yeah, know, bro. Let's get right <laughs> over that joint, bro. Uh, I don't. I don't like it. It doesn't feel like it's happening anymore. It doesn't. Uh, it, I know it, they. It didn't feel like it was happening literally the week after. They were like, "Yeah, 
I know, I know we can still get Shotzi Blackheart regardless if Tony Storm or, you know, if Io Shirai retains and they do Raquel and give her the title, but like, I'd rather just have Tony Storm because uh, obviously she's much more experienced than Raquel. So, and plus she's a former women's champion, so it wouldn't really look weird. So, uh, yeah. I'm not going to lie to you about Raquel. She, she's growing on me, man. I, I, don't, I don't hate her. No. I, 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 I like Raquel. I, like, I'm not saying Raquel is, like, less experienced, like, as a bad thing. It's just, like... Yeah, she just doesn't have the seasoning. I get, I get what you're saying. I, I, I do like Raquel a uh, lot. Her taking over the... Um, just kind of the real Ripley spot as just, like, the big woman on the roster. Like, I think that's gonna... I think that's working really well. But the next topic is something that I missed because I went to the bathroom. <laughs> oh, you missed it? <laughs> I missed it, and I didn't catch it until I was with Justin, and he was watching NXT, and he told me about it. But I am, it, bro. I am very, very excited to be right. And Santos Escobar finally gets to wrestle somebody not in the cruiserweights division, and he is going to be wrestling Karrion Cross, who they effectively turned by have uh, by you know having him. Hunt down Santos Escobar. I think this is fantastic on all fronts. Yeah. Um, I hope it's not a squash. <laughs> I just really oh, hope it's not. No. I mean, they, I don't think they will, but you, you never know sometimes. They, they love carrying down there. You know what I mean? So this is Santos Escobar's time to show. He's about to show he out. He is that motherfucker and take, like, he doesn't have to win. But taking no. it to care, taking it yeah. to Carrying Cross will definitely establish himself very well, uh, just as a cruiserweight, and you know, fuck it, just as a good wrestler in general. Like, yeah. I, th- I think yeah, I think he don't miss, bro. I think that match is going to be very interesting, and it's going to be very different because Carrying Cross has never wrestled anybody this small or like smaller, smaller than him. Yeah, this is it, man. This is. <laughs> We used to pray for times like this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're gonna turn up, bro. Um, I'm, I because we, we really haven't seen. Do we have we seen like a really competitive Karrion Cross match since he signed? Did I? Admit, I'm trying to think. If you want to talk, if you want to say the Keith Lee match or the Damian Priest match that happened recently, then yeah. Okay, the Priest match. I'm trying. I'm trying to think other than that. I'm like, I don't, the Keith Lee. It was kind of low key, like it. I don't want to say a squash, but no, uh, it. Like it was very, uh, very dominant. Uh, but I, I yeah. will say the the priest match it was kind of both where it was like head uh, more competitive. Yeah. But my favorite Karrion Cross match will always be his match that he had against uh, Dijakovic because he had that motherfucker snooze. <laughs> he had that motherfucker weeping for his life, bro. But yeah, that's it for NXT. We're gonna go into quick hits before we go into the Dusty Classic stuff, and the first topic is. Reed versus uh, Scott. How do, how do you feel about it? Um, I can speak all day about how good I think Isaiah Swerve Scott is. Um, I think that man is he's really, really good at wrestling. Mm-hmm. Um, I like Bronson Reed too. Uh, I like I like the whole I love the I love the whole package they got together with Bronson Reed. I like the I like the entrance. He really feels like a big deal. I love his finisher. I think the big old splash at the top is great for him. Um, no, it was just a really good match all around. I think both both parties look good. Mm-hmm. The right man won, I believe. I think I don't. Where does Bronson Reed go from here? Um, is it Gargano? If if you know Gargano gets cast for Kushida. Yeah. The. Oh, I don't think Kushida. I don't want Kushida to lose. So I, don't I don't either. Want, but, That's why I was yeah. thinking like, damn, because. Yeah. Um. Wait. Yeah, so before I uh, – let, let's just think forward ahead, like the trajectory for Bronson Reed. I definitely think that – well, we originally thought, like, you know, they were just, like, heating him up against uh, to go against Karrion Cross in the future. But yeah. since Cross is, like, face tweener in a sense, we'll see how that goes. But them kind of, like, not just outright doing it, I think that is really good because they are really heating him up. They're, like – they're making it so when the match happens, it's kind of like believable, I guess. Yeah. So uh, we'll see how that goes. But Swerve, re- really good stuff here. I definitely think this really angry kind of character that he has going on is a lot more than I've seen of him in the future. And the future being 
just being the cocky pretty boy on MLW and being kill shot on Lucha Underground where he basically said nothing. <laughs> so you know, uh, you know what I need from Swerve? Look, Tony Khan did it. I want, I need, I don't know how much it's going to cost. I need the Shaka Khan back, bro. I need the Shaka Khan entrance. If they can, if they can put some bread up. It's time. <laughs> that, if you want to get, if you want to get Swerve over, I Put guarantee you. <laughs> I hear if I hear a little Congo, whatever the hell noise that is at the beginning, like, doo -doo 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 -doo. that's it. Oh uh, come I mean, on, man! <laughs> whatever the hell that instrument is, I need that. Bring that you back. weird, you weird as hell, man. That, that, bring that, yo. You know what? I, I on everything. I when I first started, when I first seen him, what was his name before when he's Indies? Um, uh, Strickland. Yeah. Chainsaw. Yeah. The first thing I ever saw when he came out with the interest, I heard the Shaka Khan playing. See, you would understand. You're a young man, <laughs> an old man like myself. Appreciate. I, I, I appreciate the Shaka Khan when they come on. I'm like, oh, oh no, this, this guy, this guy's it. I didn't need to see a wrestling match. I already knew what it was. Oh my lord. <laughs> hey, Paul, you you heard him, man. Yeah, put, put the, the bread put up, bro. Put the bread up. You can't let Tony Khan. You let Tony Khan out. Do you like that? He gave Jungle Boy a song. Well, which up. is uh, he paid up. That, that, that could get over. That could get over too. That could get over crazy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, next topic. Uh, Imperium is on the way for global dominance. It seems like uh, they gave Walter his flight inquiry for Tulum, Mexico. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it's time. Uh, it is. And, you know, I think we were talking about it. Uh, we talked about it last week. We never got our Balor and Walter match. We here. We here. It's, it's time. I then told you. Look, we, we get another uh, Imperium versus Undisputed Era, but this time it's featuring Balor, and then that leads into the singles match. Yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's go. Like, I think we're, I think we're due for another Worlds Collide. <laughs> you know what? Um, look, they could do that for Mania weekend. What's stopping yeah. them from doing that for Mania weekend? Just, do Worlds Collide. Just let it, just let it happen. Let fe feature the main roster on Worlds Collide too. Ooh, again, run, run that back, please, please. Uh, now, the first one had that's the one that had um Brody and Dijak, right? Is that the first I one? Uh, I believe so. I that believe match was so. that was a banger. I we need to go watch those uh, shits back. But like I, I, w I would love to see you know, <clears throat> I would love to see Drew Gulak come back. Um, obviously, you, there's, there's no point of fantasy booking it right now because you know, literally, we want anybody on the main roster to show up, uh -huh. honestly, uh, and just wrestle like, you know, Alexander Wolf or you know Walter, Kyle O'Reilly, any of those guys. So, so we're due, we're due for a Worlds Collide. So that should be something. And now we're going to get into the 205 Live slash Dusty Classic stuff. Hmm. The first match that we have here is The Way. Uh, Indy Hartwell, Candice LeRae versus uh, Gigi. I f I ch why Gigi do Dob I forget? Dob I don't, why do I forget to write the last names? I always want to like condense it down, but it's just like, no, you need to say the full name. Gigi but, uh, Dolan. I apologize. Gigi yeah, Dolan. Gigi Dolan. Jade. Yeah, the new signees for NXT, and I thought it was a really good match. Uh, Gigi is really good. People really need to forget about the past and just say, just say, just acknowledge that she was really, she was really good in there, and it looked good. And um, Indy Hartwell also doing really well, uh, well in there as well. <laughs> Bro, I did, I didn't realize Cora J was so young. I didn't know she was nineteen. Oh yeah. Uh, when I saw her on Dark, I was just like, "Oh, that is a that is a child." <laughs> I, did, I, did, I didn't realize she was that young. I was like, "Oh, yeah. okay." It's so, like Paige, it feels like Paige all over again. That's yep. <laughs> is Paige was I was Paige like eighteen when she started. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Uh, so. I think I believe she was wrestling even uh, younger than that. Yeah, I know she, she wrestling at like fourteen, but yeah, when she signed, I'm pretty sure the, she was the, like eighteen. Uh, the Mysterio deal yeah. <laughs> start at 13, 14. Right. Uh That's pain, but um. Yeah, I, I thought this match looked good. Uh, Indy Hartwell looked great. Candice LeRae being uh, Candice LeRae and Gigi being kind of like the ring generals in that match. I thought it, I thought it was really good. It, it meshed really well. Uh, hopefully to see the, the two new signees in the future and more of Indy Hartwell going forward. And the next match that happened on 205 Live was Timothy Thatcher versus Tommaso Ciampa, and they won against, excuse me, um, Tony Nice and. 
Ari Davari. De Niro Davari, yep. Uh, oh, yeah. Uh, I forgot that's his gimmick Devar- now. Devar De Niro. Uh, having Brent. Can I please tell you something about uh, Aria Davari? When I went to Money in the Bank, um, was that last year? Don't, don't tell me he was riding in, the, uh, riding in the Nissan, Brent. <laughs> no. No, but when I left I uh, left uh, Money in the Bank, or one of the pay-per-views, I remember Shane, Shane left in the Hummer because he, like, he, it was in Hartford, so he's, like, right down the street from where he lived at. So he pulled up in the Hummer. He bumped in. Uh, what was he playing? I think he's playing... Um, they had the notorious thugs player or something like that. Something, something. Oh lord. He played the hard <laughs> shit though. He came out the garage. We everybody saw him. But um no, I just remember I feel bad because I remember when I went to Money in the Bank. I don't I don't remember it was a cruiserweight title match. I don't it was before they integrated with NXT. I just remember it was Arya Davari wrestling for the belt. I don't remember who the champion was, but let me tell you, the whole crowd walked out. As soon as his music hit, the oh, whole crowd just walked. Damn. I felt so bad for my guy. Like, damn, bro. I I that was good too. I just don't remember what it oh like. Man. I've never been to uh one of the WWE shows where they taped like two or five before or after. Like I, I I didn't attend shows during that era. I only attended the pay per views. But uh yeah, pe- people were people were green on a two oh five uh two oh five live guys. Yeah, it was bad. Uh, and then I, they'd be on Twitter all day pleading for them to get title shots and shit. But, but, bro, it, I, but I will say one of the um two or five lives that shows I did I stayed after a SmackDown when they were at um Mohegan Sun. It was I, who the hell I think it might have been Ali and I don't remember who the other person was. I remember the match was a banger though. But um, I, 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 you know I totally get why people were leaving though because you're exhausted after like after watching the whole SmackDown. <laughs> it's exhausting to sit there and have to watch. Some, some high, these high, yeah, these high pace matches. But low key, we don't really care about. Like, I mean, that, I think they're all great. <laughs> I like, especially at that point, that roster was like really, really good. But mm-hmm. I wasn't trying to stay. I was ready to go yeah. home, bro. I was, I was, <laughs> but now, uh, since they're basically uh, NXT extra hour, uh, we get we get to see Tommaso Ciampa and Timothy Thatcher mesh well. Mesh, uh, they, they mesh well together, winning the match. There was no doubt in my mind that they were gonna win. Uh, yeah. The match was okay. I it happened like last. Uh, yeah, it was last Friday, so I don't really remember much. But it, it was a fine match. Uh, Timothy Thatcher just doing his thing, and also Tommaso Ciampa just really coming hard with the knee strikes, uh, or you know his uh, really brawler style. So that's it. And then on NXT this week, we had Grizzly Young Vets beat. Uh, Kushida and Leon Ruff, which was very surprising to me. The whole left side of my bracket is bust. And honestly, it's been cooked since, uh, what is it, Adonis and uh, Desmond Troy got uh, got swapped out. So <laughs> I don't feel bad anymore. But um, that match happened. Really good match. And MSK versus Killian Dane and um, Drake Maverick. Absolutely no doubt in our mind that MSK was winning. The match was whatever. Honestly, no. please break up those two. Like they are doing. I got. A, I, I got an NXT complaint. Uh, oh, I what's up? You. There's too many dudes wrestling in jeans. I hate niggas that wrestle in jeans. <laughs> I don't want to watch. Why are you wrestling in jeans, bro? I like. I, I understand why Drake Maverick's doing it. The match with. I don't want to see guys wrestle in jeans. Just shoot okay. it too. Cut that out. Rest. When everybody is wrestling in jeans, wrestling jeans is no longer special. Yeah. And, if we want to talk, if we want to talk about attire, why is Darby Allen wrestling in Daisy Dukes, bruh, with the leggings <laughs> underneath? That shit really makes no sense to me. <laughs> that shit really don't. But let's hey. not get on that tangent. <laughs> he, he, he's, a, he's a different guy, man. I don't even know what to tell you about him. Alt, alternate lifestyle. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> we got Dakota Kai and Raquel Gonzalez, uh, and they beat uh, Aaliyah and uh, Jesse Kamea to no surprise to anybody and I believe I don't have to bracket up but I believe they'll be facing uh Shotzi Blackheart and Ember Moon Ninja? no uh Team Ninja right hell if I know I don't know I, I, I don't have the bracket <laughs> for it I don't even know because I I think it's a uh, Shotzi Blackheart and uh Ember Moon versus the way uh I think they're on that side of the bracket okay. if you're shouting out your phone I don't have it up and I'm not gonna look it up but yeah. they win and then next week we have Lucha Val- Lucha House Party versus Elgato del Fantasma. I am very worried. 
because <laughs> I need uh, Eldegado to make it to the finals. I, I told you, look, this is about to happen. This is what I want. This is what I tweeted. I said, give me MSK, Lucha House Party. You telling me I won't be more of a banger than Elgato in MSK? Because that's who, that's who they're going to have to wrestle. I don't know. <laughs> all, like, all these matches are going to be fine. It's going to be a banger. Oh, like, the, I, 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 yeah. I, I said it before why I want uh, El- uh, Phantasma uh, team, to, uh, the faction to win. So we'll just see how this goes. I mean, I guess either way is fine with me because Mendoza's my guy. Yeah, Metalik's my guy. So either way, I'm cool <laughs> with it. I I I am the uh, I'm a fan of Joaquin Wild. Uh, I thought he was really great in GCW when he was DJZ. Yo, if they uh, need to bring the air horn back. Please bring that there. I, I'm, <laughs> I'm mad. I'm mad they didn't bring that. Like when he first came in, I was so mad they didn't bring the air horn with him. That would have been so fire. They since since uh, Mustafa is no longer using the light up thing. Let yeah. him come back with Let his light up stuff. Give me the air horn. When he's done with this faction. <laughs> oh. oh, and before we go any further, um, back to uh, Dakota Kai and Raquel versus Ali. Yo, I, I, they played me because I'm going to tell you, look, I'm watching the match. Ali, Ali was getting her ass kicked the whole match, right? So I'm thinking, oh, Jessica May about to come through with the crazy hot tag. We about to go crazy. I thought she had worked on something <laughs> in the PC. <laughs> she tagged it. <laughs> and Raquel beat her ass. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> there, there ain't no, there ain't no hot tags off I, uh, Raquel, I, I thought, bro. I thought, I thought Jessica Meg had some shit she she came up with in the PC that she about to show out. Nope. Je- Jessica Mea is really good. Is she? Let's. Uh, yeah, I two years ago I saw a match against her and Shayna Baszler. Oh, it's Shayna Baszler, but yeah, Shayna Baszler let her get a lot, and she looked really good. She looks like she. She is miles of head, whatever bullshit she was on when she was in the May Young Classic. <laughs> okay, I think but, you're right I, I like her. You know what yeah. I mean? I was, I was I really, I was like really high. I was like, oh, she about to show out. I was really excited because you know, my my I watched enough wrestling in my brain. Like, okay, clearly, <laughs> Aaliyah's getting beat up this whole long time because they're gonna be having a nice little hot, you know, hot tag, and then mm-hmm. nah, nah, cut cut off the <laughs> knees. <laughs> but uh, I I think we're split. On the Lucha House Party versus uh, Legado del Fantasma, and then another match for the quarterfinals is going to be Undisputed Era versus Timothy Thatcher and Tommaso Ciampa. This this bracket is very hard to book, <laughs> but I'm going to go with Undisputed hard. Era on this one. I, I agree. I'm going to go with the uh, Undisputed Era. Um, yeah. Just just based off of if we're, you know, if we're doing this fully K theme, um, Undisputed Era got the chemistry. They've been together. Champ and Thatcher, I don't think this is going to work out in the long run. I don't know where they're going with that. Yeah, let, let, um, let's just cut it now. <laughs> let's just cut it now. Um, and, and, it, and it doesn't have to be the, oh, shit, we lost in the Dusty Classic, so now I hate you again. Yeah. No, we don't need, but we they don't could. need that. No, we don't. But they we could. We, I'm we just saying. It. <laughs> um, we, we need yeah. to go on to bigger and better things. Uh, Champ, I need to get the hell out of that NXT. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing him on NXT. <laughs> yeah, and enough. I, Leave. That, Thatcher need to wrestle for some gold. But yeah. that is it for NXT, and that is it from us. You can follow me, Cyrus, at H underscore visibility on all platforms. <laughs> all platforms, just being Instagram and uh, Twitter. Um, you can follow Quan at the comeback spot. Don't follow his main account because he's not talking about wrestling. Nah, I'm not replying to no wrestling content <laughs> on, on the on the A Trader account. Don't do it. Uh, and then you can uh, see everything that we're doing on the A Show Network at the uh, the A Show RNC. You can check out the A Show, the Rewriters Room when they come back for season two. Us on here, spot callers eventually, and I'm our born. new uh, our new show that we'll be having debuting the, soon. The, the non-existent uh, Japan show uh, that never really come out. Uh, we're not gonna throw that in there. I'm, I'm about to start pressing you. I'm about to start pressing I'm you. Just, I'm just I'm every... just gonna I'm just gonna tell the people it exists. That's it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but yep, that is it from uh from me and Quan. We'll see you next week for beach break i'm praying the show is good (laughs) i usually cry at weddings so we'll see how it goes oh lord (laughs)